All right, everybody, welcome back to another series. And in this one, we're gonna be building a decentralized university. And let me go ahead and actually show you what I got so far. So go ahead, open up your favorite platform, TNBOS, and click on this university icon. And as you probably noticed, instead of just that white square that says university before, I did make quite a few updates. And for now, what we can do is go under this teach section to this My Courses page. Make sure you click that. And we're gonna go ahead and create a new course by clicking this new course button. And I am just gonna be making a draft course that I actually plan on making in the future. I don't actually have any videos recorded yet, but it's good to use as a demonstration. So I'm gonna create a course and name it React Optimization and just give it a quick description. Say in this course, we will learn how to optimize React applications. Applications, and I also made this snazzy thumbnail right here. So just gonna copy the URL for that and paste it in this field, submit and boom. So as you see, we now have a course created However, this course, you can tell by this badge in the top right, it's in draft mode right now. So what does this mean? Well, the other mode or status, I guess you could say is published. So if you click this little checkbox to publish the course and hit submit, that's gonna publish your course. And whenever a course is published, what this means is that this course is now shared with other devices that we're connected to. So in essence, this device right here that I'm on, it's gonna act as a host to provide this data to other devices. Now to kind of see what I'm talking about in action, if we go back to this main page and under this learn section, you just go ahead and click browse. What you're gonna see right here is all of the other courses from the other devices that we're connected to that are being shared with us. So right now I'm only connected to one other device, which is my MacBook. However, on that device, I have four courses that I created and are being hosted. And actually to show you something pretty cool, let me, so you guys aren't gonna see this because I am on my Mac right now, but go ahead and keep an eye on this title right here, Electron, React, and Redux. So I'm just gonna make an update to this. You can probably hear me typing. I'm gonna hit corn and then hit submit. And as you see, whenever I make those changes on my MacBook, those changes are gonna be reflected in real time right here. So now, let me actually go ahead and change that back to Electron, React, and Redux, and there we go. So really just trying to demonstrate that we have data that's hosted on other devices that's being shared with us in real time, and as that data gets updated, those updates are reflected on my UI. Again, all of this happening in real time. Pretty darn cool. Now, let's go ahead and click into one of these courses and take a look at what we got. So on the course homepage, you can see an overview of, you know, all the videos or the lectures that we call them in the code. And you can, of course, click and view each one, watch the video, uh, go back to the course page. And let's see, you can also take the course. And whenever you take the course, what it does is it moves it kind of out of this browse section. You see that it's no longer here, just moves it into your My Courses section, really just for better organization. And let me just go ahead and leave that course actually. Now, another cool feature that I built in is cloning the course. Now, like I said, right now, this course is hosted on my MacBook and I'm on my iMac right now, another device. And by cloning the course, I'm basically gonna copy all of the content and make me as the owner or instructor for this object. So right now, what I just did is I copied the course object and all the lectures, as we can see, over to this device and by the way whenever you first clone a course every single thing is in draft mode so nothing is being shared with anyone else by default so i wrote it like this because what you can do now is go ahead and make any changes that you want and then once these changes are good you can just go ahead and publish these courses as needed now another thing that i want to know is that even though i publish these courses they still aren't gonna be visible to any other devices. And that's because the course itself is still not published. So it isn't until you actually publish the parent course, which I can do from either that uh, form that we just saw or just right here, where once it's published, 
then like I said, everything is then gonna be visible and shared with everyone else. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this course because I don't actually wanna clone it. Just wanna kinda of show you this cool cloning logic. And by the way, the reason that I made this is two reasons. One, it is kind of tedious right now writing in all the individual lectures. And I just figured that if we wanted to collaborate and kind of like build up these courses and write actual descriptions with better thumbnails and so on and so forth, then it's just a way that like multiple people can kind of collaborate at the same time. I make some changes, uh, you clone the course, make your changes, then I can clone over, so on and so forth. And another useful reason I found for cloning this course is sometimes I'm just developing and I need to go ahead and reset my entire store or basically just like wipe all my data just for testing purposes. In that case, what I can do is for all the courses I have created, I can just clone them to another device wipe all the data on this device. And then once I'm you know, done developing or whatever, I can just pretty much copy all those courses back to this main device that I want them on. But yeah, just thought that cloning was a pretty cool feature, at least one that I find handy. Now, as far as our roadmap in the future, what I want to do is, well, one of the first things that I wanna do is just make it easier to add lectures. And I'll show you what I'm talking about right now. So for this course that we just created, whenever we create a new lecture, I'll show you how it's kind of a pain right now. So the first lecture name, I don't have a video like I said, but let's just say I'm gonna make a video on using the DevTools profiler. And I'll say in this lecture, we learn about the DevTools profiler. Okay, definitely to copy that there we go and for the thumbnail url actually for the thumbnail url i'll show you what i do so i'm going to need the video code and this isn't the actual video it's just the last video i recorded but just to use an ex example this is what i would type in for the youtube id now whenever you upload a video to youtube it generates a default thumbnail and it can be uh, queried by this format right here. So in here, what I do is I copy that from that Stack Overflow link, and then I just paste the video code right here, and that gets you your thumbnail. Now, all of that, as you could see, it was kind of tedious. I have to like go to YouTube and look at the URL and copy this, then go to the Stack Overflow page and like, copy this and replace my video code with this and like, it, it wasn't that bad what we just did, but imagine like some of my courses that have like 200 videos in them. So imagine doing that 200 times. I'm gonna get carpal tunnel in like five seconds. So I definitely wanna make that process a little bit easier. Another thing that I want to do is I wanna add in Vimeo support since a lot of videos are on Vimeo too. And right now this is only supporting uh, YouTube. So make it a little bit more flexible. And in addition to that, some other features that I had planned a while ago is first of all, on the, um, these are kind of features as the student's perspective. Uh, first on the lectures page, just have a little progress bar to, yeah, just track your progress. You know, nothing else to say about that. And then on the actual video or lecture page, I thought it would be cool to have a download button a lot of people ask to download my videos and well, there's like not a download button on YouTube. So, you know, since this is pretty much our own platform and we could build whatever features we want, I thought that would be a cool feature. And another thing that I thought was handy was just to have some links to different resources. Um, almost everyone asked for the source code. And on some videos I have like links to, I don't know, maybe somewhere I got images or uh, installation guides. Uh, links to like docs of whatever topic we're learning, so on and so forth. But yeah, just like different links for resources. And as far as the first interactive feature, since these are kind of like, you know, the download button, the resources, it's just like static content. As far as um, an interactive feature goes, I think there's a motorcycle outside, but I thought a comment section would be, you know, one of the top things on the list of priorities 
since a lot of people have questions, just want to get feedback, or I'm just chat, hang out, that'd be cool too. But a comment section is definitely top on the list. And then some other small things is that on these uh, course pages right here, whenever you're just browsing the courses from other devices, right now I only have four. So it's not, you know, you don't really need too many tools. However, I can see this growing where once I have all my courses there, maybe like, I don't even know how many, let's say like 50 or something. Then if we have some tools for like filtering and searching and sorting, kind of just small stuff like that, that you see in every application, but those are going to be handy, not only for viewing like courses on other devices, but even your own courses. Um, you know, imagine you have like 50 of these and you want to edit the Django course. It's going to be kind of tough to find out. So, you know, some small stuff like that, but it's a small stuff that really turns this from like a high school project feeling app to like a professional application. Uh, all those slight interactions, transitions, uh, small features, stuff like that. So yeah, that's kind of just the overview. Just want to show you what we have so far and kind of where we're going. But if anyone has any other suggestions for other features or other UI improvements that I can make, I would love to hear them. Basically, any other tools that we can use to help each other learn, um, yeah, let me hear them. I mean, this is our application. It's We're pretty much the end users. So, uh, you know, our feedback is the most important. So yeah, on that note, that is what we're gonna be doing. If anyone is interested in following along, building this thing with me, then uh, yeah, we'll see where it goes. So for now, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.